Mm. Hey, hey. There he is. Morning. Oh, I hate having my face juxtaposed right next to yours. <laughs> it just really accentuates like how old and fat I've gotten. Are you in your backyard? I'm in my backyard because oh, with things being the way they are, I can't really go to a studio space like we used to. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? Happy Easter. Thanks, man. I actually, when we planned on doing this, I totally forgot that it was A, Easter, and B, my birthday. I totally Wait, forgot. Wait, birthday? Yeah, I didn't remember until oh. yesterday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks, man. This That's is how awesome. I want to spend it. Amazing. Oh, I got coffee, too. Oh, nice. Cheers. Cheers. So how do you feel about big hair? Because it's happening. You're telling me. I'm used to getting a haircut every week. Well, you're keeping it nice and tight still. Like, look at my sideburns. Like, what is going on? Like, why do they grow so much more aggressively than every other part of my head? Yeah. So this is going to be fun, I think. I'm, I'm looking forward to chatting with you. We have a, there's a lot that I actually want to talk to you about because I want your advice on things. Yeah. And um, you might have questions for me, too, about what's going on with uh, COVID. I'm happy to address whatever you want. Um, but shall we just ask each other questions? What do you want to yeah. do? Take turns? Yeah. Okay, so you seem like the right guy to talk to about this sort of thing. And I think a lot of our listeners at the House of Pod would like to hear this too. Um, you know, it's, we always talk about how important it is to keep routines, keep yourself as mentally fit as possible. It is really, really hard to do. So how, how are you doing it right now? What is your routine like? Yeah. And how do you recommend people go about making their own? Well, first of all, I'm going to say that I'm an introvert. So it comes a little, this whole scenario comes a little bit more naturally to me than I'm sure it does most people. Um, it's not too far outside of the realm of like my normal routine anyway, but I definitely was like, in, when we first started to lock down, I was like, okay, I need to make sure that I kind of set up some sort of structure for my life and that I'm not just living in my PJs 24 seven, watching TV and binging on snack food all the time. Cause that's yeah. not, lead to anything healthy in the long run. So w one of the most important things that I started to do was to, to re get into was my gratitude journal. Um, that's something that I really did a lot when I was going through hard times, depression in the past. And so I knew that that's something that kind of like keeps me, my perspective in a really good, healthy place. So that when I wake up in the morning, that's the first thing that I'll do is I'll sit down and I've got my, my little moleskin and I'll sit down and I'll just jot out five to 10 things that I'm grateful for. Oh, that's really awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's really great. How long does it, how long do you spend doing that? Uh, it depends on how difficult it is for me to come up with things that morning. <laughs> it could be yeah. five minutes. It could be 10 minutes. Sometimes it's easier than others, but yeah. it, it's definitely better than just immediately opening up, you know, news articles and just reading headlines and social media and all that right away. Right. Well, that's sort of the other question I have for you is like, um, how to manage social media in a time like this. I mean, I think it's sort of this cruel function of my phone now to show me how much time I spend on it. And it it's just at this yeah. point, it seems unnecessary so and easy. an unusual punishment. And, and for me in medicine, I, I'm finding it really useful. It's an incredible tool for learning about what's happening. In fact, I will say this, uh, you know, the doctors I know that were on Twitter, for example, yeah they saw this coming and the severity of it much sooner than the doctors I know who aren't because we were seeing things from like other places. We were seeing what was happening in Italy and in Iran and in New York and everywhere else before it started going to other places. And um, I think it is really helpful in that way in spreading information, treatment strategies, things that are working because there's not a lot of real data out there. So we are using social media a lot as doctors to like learn things, but is really a challenge to learn when to shut it off yeah it keeps us connected it helps us do things like this which make you know make my day but yeah. how how do you recommend we do it how do you recommend we limit it and you're you're a social media guy how, how are you making this work i know i'm guilty of you know upset at being on social media so often and i can rationalize it too because i'm like this is what i do this is what i get paid to do. This is my responsibility. So it's so easy for me to just endlessly loop through Instagram, then Facebook, then Twitter, then Snapchat, then, you know, what the net, TikTok, whatever it is. But I, you know, I'm living with someone right now, my partner, and I really make it a point that when 
you know, especially in the evening when, when things start to wind down and we like might put on a TV or movie, have dinner together, that I'm not constantly picking my phone all the time, that there's like dedicated space and time for other things where my phone is face down, I'm not gonna pick it up, I'm not gonna look at it, and yeah. And, and that brings me to another thing that, you know, especially if you're living with someone who's like your romantic partner or couple or something, that even though we're stuck at home together all the time, that you still kind of structure your day in a way that's like, some of it's for recreation, some of it is for if you're working from home to work from home and to have a designated area for that and to, res to communicate that with the other person and respect that space. Mm -hmm. But then also, even though you're spending time with this person, presumably every day, to still have designated time for like a date night or something, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. we did that recently and I was like, we just got dressed up. I mean, we're gonna sit on our couch and watch TV anyway, but mm -hmm. we got dressed up and we made it a thing and it just felt a little more special than it would have otherwise. Yeah, yeah, you dedicate that time. It sounds yeah. like you do a good job of fasting on the internet and the social media. I think that's totally important. It is a strange time in terms of like relationships. I'm very curious to know what people are doing, you know? I'm married, I have kids. Right. Um, so it's not totally unusual. I've been in this place for a while, but this is the most time I've spent, like I've, my wife and I have ever been like stuck together. We either at work, you know, the yeah. hospital or we're here. She, she's in the medical field as well? Yeah, yeah. She works with a lot of uh, coronavirus patients, COVID patients. Um, so she's, so she is getting out of the house in a way, but not for something really fun. You know, it's, it's a bit stressful. So it is, it is hard managing that space. And, you know, we live in a small San Francisco apartment, so it's not like there's a ton of space to begin with. So yeah. it's, it, it's important. That's a good reminder to sort of set times specifically for our own thing when possible. And then times together. I, I have to do a better job of turning my phone off, you know, and, and just walking away from it. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree. G getting back to your routine. Yeah. Um, how are you doing with exercise? Exercise, well, the, you know, there was about three weeks where I was just like not feeling it. I was really bummed that I, cause I, every morning I would go to the gym and that was like an hour or two hours to really just give it everything I got, you know, was, that's how I started my day for, for years. So it's been hard for me to finally, and I, and I always thought like working at home was like, meh. I looked at strength training and bodybuilding and just the idea of doing bodyweight exercises wasn't appealing to me. So it, I kind of put it off for a while, but I finally got around to it. I've been doing actually live uh, workouts on Instagram, which I think is cool because it's kind of an accountability thing too, and it makes it a little more fun. And I'm actually starting to really enjoy it. And I, the days that I do work out and get my heart rate up, I feel way better. And I have uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. What about you? Are you... Uh, no, no, I've not been, this has not been the healthiest time for me. I was actually, it's funny too, because before this started, um, you know, I, I was just starting to go to the gym again. I had gotten like a, a trainer and I was actually just starting to do exercise. Mm. And then of course I upset the natural balance of the universe by doing that. And I somehow caused this all to happen. <laughs> that's, that's what you I think. You and the 5G happened. towers. That's right. That's right. So um, I've been trying a little bit. Um, so I, I, it's something I need to do. I mean, it's part of the reason I wanted to have this call with you uh, and sort of get some advice on, on when to do that. It is a bit challenging, of course, because, you know, uh, we have kids. It's hard to do that in the house and exercise because they'll want to come climb on you if I'm, if I'm doing like push-ups or something like that. One thing I have to do more of is, is take walks. Um, in my neighborhood, it's an option that I have. I know you're in, you're in LA, right? Yeah. I mean, is your neighborhood... Is it like sort of walk friendly? Can you go out outside yeah. and take walks? That's something I need to keep doing and really pushing myself. I mean, the one benefit to living in San Francisco is all these hills and sort of using them to my advantage is something I need to start doing more and really dedicating time to. So tell me, what should I do, man? Give me a, give me a strategy. Aside from walking, I mean, walking is great. I, when, I, when I was personal training, it's like doing steady state cardio, you know, three or four times a week for 30 minutes greatly vastly improved your health in the long run so that's already really good but um and it, even if there's way these ways that you can incorporate your kids into your exercise mm -hmm. like my sister sometimes she'll um she'll do my live workouts too but she has a 
Let's see. She was born in October. I should know. Born in <laughs> uh, like five, six months old. Mm-hmm. So she has the baby strapped to her chest and she'll do exercises with the baby as like weight resistance weight. So Smart. You know, even if you could just make it fun or a game with the kids. Yeah, get creative. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think I'll join you for you. When's your, when, tell me, uh, and for anyone that's um, not already doing it, familiar with you and your website, um, where where do people find you and when? On Tuesdays and Saturdays, I'm doing it through the AIDS Healthcare Instagram. It's just AIDS Healthcare on Instagram. And then I kind of just, I haven't been doing a set schedule lately, but I'll announce it on my stories like a day or two before when I do it online. Um, All right. Yeah, I like that plan. I like that plan. Do you have any questions for me about COVID? Yeah. Um, man, I, I mean, I, first of all, I think it's really cool that you are able to communicate with other medical professionals in real time now with social yeah. media and, and how that's kind of informing the, your, like your knowledge and how you're going about handling it. Because, and a lot of times I notice that the information that's coming from higher up is kind of behind. It seems a little lagging. Yeah. Is that, no, I mean, is that something you're experiencing? Oh, uh, it, totally. Definitely. I mean, and you have to, um, you have to be careful where you're getting your sources from now more than ever. You normally in the world of medicine, things move slowly because that's how we like, we like to be cautious. We like to do the research. We like to have the data here. It's hard to do that. It's hard to create good papers, you know, to make a good study, to make a good paper really takes some time. You have to like really take your time to like do the study, research it, have it vetted, have it peer reviewed by other doctors, scientists. And it's hard to do that these days because of the way things are going. So to some degree, while that's happening in the background, we also need to sort of be spreading as much information amongst doctors who are doing the treatment right now and currently working with them. And that's been really useful listening to doctors and New York and seeing what they're doing in Detroit and then comparing it to with what doctors in Italy and China have been doing. It's been really um, useful. So there is a little bit of difficulty in knowing where to get that information for the everyday person who isn't in medicine, doesn't know people. Um, I would say this. So Dr. Fauci, the guy who has been sort of uh, at the podium with, with Trump, he's brilliant. Um, he is a, a voice I trust. I mean, he is like the editor of one of the greatest medical tomes of all time, Harrison's, which is like something we all read when we're in medical training. He's well respected. He's been at the front lines of every infectious thing since like 1984. So it's really useful. It's really useful to have him um, around. And I would listen to him uh, in what he says. And I try not to get too political. Uh, but these days it is hard to not get too political. I really feel like they're forcing my hand on this one. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I, I would say listen to those people over maybe uh, the president, which is a strange thing to say. I know. And I can't believe I'm saying that, but you really have to listen to the, your, the people in medicine and, and the scientists here on this one. Um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough measuring because there's going to be two very different forces that are going to be coming in the next month or two. There's going to be on one hand, what the scientists and what the doctors are going to recommend. And then there's going to be people who are looking from a different perspective. And, right. and I'm not saying it's not a valid perspective. We have to look at the economy. We have to look at other things, but there's going to be people who are going to be talking and using speaking points that aren't necessarily going to be aligned with those of us in the medical community. Um, and I definitely think I'm biased, obviously, because I'm in the medical community, but I think this is a time more than ever to, to listen to the doctors and the scientists. I think this is the time, if you're ever going to, this would be the time. Yeah. We hear a lot about flattening the curve with the exponential growth of the virus. Do you see signs that that's starting to happen? Do you think that that's, how do you feel that that's going to relate to as far as the timeline when we can start to leave our homes and get back to work maybe if our jobs are still there or try to yeah. create semblance of normal life? Yeah, that's a really good question. And it's a really tough one. So for your uh, listeners and your viewers um, who don't know me, I should just first start by saying, so I have this medical podcast, it's called The House of Pod. And uh, we talk about medical uh, issues. We've been doing it for about a year and a half, two years. 
in the last month or two, obviously it's been all coronavirus. So we've been interviewing a lot of people about COVID and trying to get um, up to date and trying to, to find the best new information. The truth of it is in terms of the curve, it does in California where you and I are, it, it does seem to be flattening. That does seem to really, the measures we've taken going early into this physical distancing, it really has made a difference. Um, it, it, and we compare our numbers to New York, for example, even the few days that we decided to do the social distancing, physical distancing earlier, really made a difference. When you're dealing with something on an exp that grows exponentially, even a couple of days will make a difference. So we are in what's called a flattened curve. But the, the important point about that is it doesn't mean that people aren't going to still get sick. I mean, we still have to be very careful. This is going to be a long, tough fight. Um, what it means, though, is that we've done it at such a rate, we've slowed down the rate of growth enough that it won't overwhelm the medical system and make the medical system collapse, yeah. um, which is really the fear. You know, in New York, the medical system is essentially collapsing, and it's so bad that every other medical issue then gets put aside. It's not just coronavirus, not just COVID patients that get hurt from this. It's everyone else who had something else going on at the same time. It's people who needed a procedure that's been put off. People who need treatment for cancer that's being put off. People who are gonna have really big downstream effects. This is gonna be a long, tough fight. Um, but the good news is the measures that we're taking, the physical distancing, it really does seem to be working. I mean, it's really, it's really good to see. I mean, it does give me a little bit of hope. The next couple of weeks are really going to be telling. The next couple of weeks are, in California at least, are going to let us know whether or not we are we successfully stayed off uh, of that surge. Um, but I do expect things will continue. It'll probably get a little bit worse. I'm hoping there isn't a big uptick after Easter and people attending church services, family gatherings. Um, but I am hopeful. Now, the the bigger part of your question, the really tough one is when do we reopen? Um, and that is a question I don't know. I don't have a good answer to because the problem and what I'm afraid of is no matter how well we control things here, if things aren't controlled in other places, then we're still gonna have an ongoing problem. There's still gonna be people from here going over there, getting it, coming back. There's gonna be people coming here from other places, bringing it. It's gonna be tough to do, um, you know, my hope is that by you know July, August, we're getting back to some semblance of normalcy. Um, but I'll be honest with you, this thing is changing so much on a, on a, it was on an hourly basis now, like a daily, weekly basis. It's hard to know, it's hard to know. I think the next two weeks will really help us. And in the meantime, if we were to find a good treatment, that would be huge, you know? And there's a couple of promising options out there, things that are still being studied, nothing that I would say is a miracle drug, Nothing that um, I would say is an absolute cure, um, but there are some promising things and there's lots of people looking into it, which is also great. So I think the next couple of weeks is gonna help us a lot or help us figure out what's happening. But that's not a really, that's not a super um, optimistic answer, I know. I mean, it's reality, so yeah. it's just how it is. It's gonna be a weird time. It's gonna be a weird year and um, the truth of it is, I, you know, I don't know if things will ever totally go back to normal. Um, there will be some things that change and uh, I'm okay with that. Like personally, how attached am I to the handshake as a way of greeting people? <laughs> I'm, not that, I'm not that attached to it. I can live without it, you know? Will, will there be maybe times in the future where there's like a cold flu and coronavirus season, for example? That's possible. There might be, you know, there might be some need to do social distancing, physical distancing on say a smaller level in the future too. Um, I think things might change pretty dramatically, but um, I think we will get back to a, a much closer sense of normalcy. It will happen. And, uh, and I really do want to emphasize that I'm really impressed with our state and how people have done here, how, how much yes. it's helped. I'm really proud of being a Californian for that, for that, uh, just for that alone. So um, let's see, I asked you about uh, your exercise and we kind of touched on this, but something I need to talk about is I don't think the line between being bored and being hungry has ever been so blurry. <laughs> so so, so what, what, do, what do you recommend to keep us 
from gorging ourselves constantly on, on junk food. That's so tough. And I've, I've asked myself that exact question because that's what I want to do when I'm bored is I just want to munch yeah. on things. And it's just, it makes you feel good. Yeah. That little comfort. Um, oh, yeah. But the thing I noticed when I don't, think about eating as much and I don't eat as much is when I'm really consumed in doing something that I'm excited about or excited about focused on. So when I'm working on a project I'm really into, then the food is kind of like the last thing on my mind. When I don't really have much to do and I'm just kind of chilling and trying to like take up, take up time, that's when I really am like catching myself resisting constantly the urge to eat, get a snack, get something. Yeah. Checking in with myself like, am I hungry? Do I, is it time to eat? But um, that's something that I think is really important, not just for kind of suppressing appetite, but overall health is to have something, even though you're stuck at home, if you can't work from home, that you have something that you can focus on, that you're passionate about, that right. gives you meaning on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you're not just consuming, not just food, but like media, and right. entertainment, escapism, but you're actually working on something that's, whether it's you're educating yourself or, you know, picking yeah. up a hobby or something like that. It's true. But at the same time here, I'm going to take off my jacket here. At the same yeah. time, I almost Forever. like I've gotten more, <laughs> you know, because we have this podcast, I've gotten more emails about how to start a podcast than ever before. You yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> people are really like want to do something, which is great. And I think they should, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, this might also be a good time to, for people to take a step back too. Yeah. I mean, what, one thing I would like people to do is just to start to learn the language of expressing themselves and how they feel. We recently did an episode oh, with a psychiatrist um, uh, talking about how to sort of stay healthy, mentally healthy during these times. And um, the first one is just sort of admitting that you have a mental health stressor and yeah. uh, admitting that and then starting to use words and terms to describe how you're feeling other than it's okay, you know? <laughs> I think that's like where we, this is the first thing I'd like to see people do, you know? I do think there's a lot of, I, I think there's a lot to be said for keeping yourself busy, having a routine. That does seem to be pretty important. All right, what do I, I, do? Gonna, I do want to interject and read to you from my gratitude journal. Please do. The, th the third thing that I wrote this morning, it's funny that you say that, but I wrote, I am grateful of how aware I am of my own feelings and what I'm going through because... Yeah. That's so important to be aware of just like. Yeah, I've always been really impressed with you about why you've been so successful at bodybuilding and all the social media stuff you've done is you have really good insight into yourself. I mean, you're able to sort of look at yourself and sort of look at the good and the bad and be objective about it for a moment. Not even to like necessarily judge what you're thinking, what you're feeling, but just to acknowledge it. Be like, this is, I'm feeling this way today and not try and fix it right away. Not try and um, not be judgmental about it, either good or bad, just sort of acknowledging it for what it is. I think that's huge. And I think, you know, if we find ourselves having a day where we're like, I want to do nothing, but just hang out. I think that's okay. Yeah. Well, should we take some, are there any questions you think? Maybe people have questions or something like that. That's Let's awesome. see. Does, if anyone has questions, go ahead and give them to us now. Let me look through this list here. Okay, looking good. I am looking good. Okay, let's see. Oh, you're talking about him. Yeah, yeah, you're probably talking about him. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday. Very old. You're so old. Thank you, Shaheen. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So from one rad RNCD, um, Kave, I'm one of the few that's been on Plaquenil for 20 years. So far, no COVID. I mean, so Plaquenil is this medication. So you probably heard... Um, President Trump talking about um, those two medications, hydroxychloroquine yeah. uh, and an antibiotic that's been used in a treatment and it came out from one study um, that showed it had really good um, benefits. Now, uh, it's promising. That study is promising, but it was a very small study. It's been really criticized for how it was put together. It wasn't really a well-made study. And I don't really blame the researchers. I don't think they were trying to hide anything. I think they were doing the best with what they could on a very a very quick level but it's a limited study and those medications do have significant side effects mm -hmm. particularly cardiac arrhythmias and bad things happen and have happened since um, people have been sort of uh, creating uptick not to mention 
a lot of people are trying to grab that medicine now to use it for either treatment or for prophylaxis. And there's really no good evidence yet to do that. And people who need it, like this person, aren't, may not be able to get it because other people are on it. So um, I'm glad that you haven't gotten COVID. Please keep it that way. I don't know if the medication was the thing that did it, though. Um, but we'll see. I mean, uh, I'm hoping it is. When it comes to serious medications like that, though, we, we do have to do the work right because it can be really dangerous otherwise. It seems like uh, you guys are kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because, because of the nature of the virus and exponential growth, you don't have time on your side. So you have to make decisions quickly and broadly, but then at the same time, that goes against kind of how you function normally, the scientific method. Right. So you have to like find this balance between the two of like risk and reward. And that's gonna right. be so challenging. Yeah, no, it's, it's a tough time for the world of research. I mean, the one positive thing is that I think international communication has, is pretty good right now, at least on social media. So that is really good. I think people are sharing information, um, which is what needs to happen. I mean, you very well, one argument as for why things got as bad as they did is that we weren't having the same, we weren't getting the right information or we didn't have good um, communication with people in China. I mean, that's, that's one thing that I think anyone on the either side of the political spectrum probably agrees with. They may disagree with the reasons why that is, but clearly if we had better communication to begin with, it would have been useful. It would have been useful in sort of managing this. All right, let's see. Uh, Susanna 090900 says, it is better to take more shorter breaks to exercise briefly or less frequent, but longer workouts. So I think this is for you. Is it better to take more shorter breaks to exercise briefly or less frequent but longer workouts? You're going to accomplish two different things based on those two variables. If you're working out longer, you're not going to be able to work out as intensely. Um, so that's more for like uh, endurance uh, exercise. And then if you're doing short, shorter breaks or shorter bouts of exercise and then small breaks in between, that gives you the ability to do more high intensity. Mm -hmm. And for me, as a, as a bodybuilder and with strength training, I had the tendency to do kind of longer, easy cardio, maybe like 20, 30, 40 upwards minutes at a time. Um, but I noticed that my cardiovascular fitness as a right. consequence of that was kind of diminished and I couldn't mm -hmm. really do a whole lot for very long. So. What I've been doing lately since I've been working at home is what, you're, what you mentioned is the sh shorter bouts of exercise, more intense and more, more breaks more often. And I think that's better for cardiovascular fitness overall. Yeah, Especially yeah, I, I, that sounds reasonable to me. I mean, um, I'll defer to your knowledge on that, but um, I think overall we, you know, I, I don't know if anyone's gonna come out looking more yoked from this experience. <laughs> The only hope is to say sort of cardiovascularly fit, yeah. which by the way, is something, you know, if you are really worried about how you will respond if you get, you know, COVID, you know, being in a better sort of cardiovascular place, having more fitness there, that, that would only help. That could only help. Yeah, Our, I, I mentioned that to my doctor too, when I was feeling sick, if, if he recommended that, he said that was fine as well, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. let's see, which planet fitness would open? I, oh, <laughs> so it's a good question. When will gyms reopen in general? I, I don't know. I don't know. That's a, that's a that's a tough one. I mean, it's I don't know if it would be considered essential, but it certainly helps a lot of people with their health. So there's an argument that it could be reintroduced earlier. Um, but yeah, I don't think we're I don't think that's happening anytime soon. All right, here's you want to read that next question there? Oh uh, yeah, from oh hey look at Sal. So I'm. High school student and I spending a lot of my day studying or working. How should I use those 15 to 20 minute breaks to stay healthy and more active? Um, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is just to get up, just stand up. And sometimes if I'm working on a project and I'm editing for a long time videos, like regularly, I'll just get up and I'll just walk around the house and kind of let my mind just wander as it wants to. I, I need that just to be able to let my mind kind of just do what it wants to do and not have to focus on one topic or one thing. And I have my dog, I'll play with my dog. You could do some quick exercise um, during your downtime, push-ups, squats. Um, yeah. 
how do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel about just like really short little exercises, like two, three minutes of squats or something? Do you feel like there's any real physical benefit to that? Or do you feel like that's mostly for mentally clearing your head? I think mostly it would be for, you know, the mental clarity you get and getting your blood flowing and waking up your body again. But I think if you're doing it in a way that's more intense and you're really pushing yourself for those two or three minutes, I mean, you can be breathless pretty quickly if you're really, if you're oh, yeah. adding, uh, doing a lot of reps. Or... Won't, won't, won't take much to make <laughs> me at this point. <laughs> so I mean, you can get a lot of, I mean, I've done that before where I just kind of do little bouts and I'll be sore the next day for sure. Yeah. All right. Okay, buddy. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start following you for these workouts. I'm going to get super buffed and then I'm going to put up more pictures of me with my shirt off to compete with you uh, on social media. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be the next, uh, I'm going to be the next you basically. How do you feel about that? I'm honored. Okay. <laughs> and, I, and I'll start wearing a lab coat. <laughs> and, um, a stethoscope. It doesn't take much. It doesn't. That's pretty much all it is. You put on yeah. a stethoscope, and like right. all of a sudden, I almost wore it I'm here. Yeah, exactly. That's all it takes. That's pretty much all it was. Well, man, thank you so much. This was really fun chatting with you. I mean, it's really good uh, to see your face. First of all, it's just it's good to see like a friendly face, yeah. and I, I this is the best part of social media. So uh, maybe we'll do this again. Um, <laughs> But uh, definitely when this is all said and done, you're going to have to come up and hang out with us in San Francisco, yeah. okay? Awesome. All right. Um, all right. Hey, thanks, everyone, for watching. And uh, if you haven't already, please follow. Where, sh where should people find you if they aren't already following you? Where should they do so it? For me, it's my name, Ray Durazi, either on Instagram, um, which you can find here, obviously, or on uh, Facebook. On Twitter, it's R and then Durazi, my last name. All right. And if you guys aren't already uh, listening to the House of Pod, my podcast, you can follow us here on Instagram or uh, on Twitter at the House of Pod. Find us pretty much anywhere you get your pods casted um, and take a listen. We'll be doing a lot more coronavirus episodes coming up. All right, man. Thanks a lot. All right. Cheers. See you, man.